Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph Parish as we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Out of respect for our sacred liturgy, please silence all mobile devices at this time. The readings for today can be found on page 1131 in Gather. Our entrance song is in Gather, number 848, Gather Us In, 848. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With well, brothers and sisters, my name is Father Peter Rettig. Um, I come from Lewistown, Pennsylvania. That's where my last assignment was. But when Bishop Gaynor told me that my, first, my new assignment was going to be here, I got really excited because I've never been at a parish so big. My last assignment, Sacred Heart, in Lewistown was about 450 families, and the Twin Parish... St. Jude Thaddeus in Mifflin Town was about 200 families. So I got really excited. I'm an extrovert, so my personal challenge is to remember everybody's name in the entire parish. <laughs> we'll see if God gives me the grace to do that. But um, I grew up in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, which is south of Chambersburg, um, Diocese of Harrisburg native. I went to St. Charles Seminary, Mount St. Mary's Seminary, and I got ordained two years ago. So this is my Second assignment, I finished my first assignment in Lewistown and Mifflintown. Bishop Gaynor gifted me the gift of you guys, and so I'm so happy to be here. I'd like to clarify, I have three goals while being here. My first goal is to follow in the footsteps of the Holy Franciscans who we are succeeding, because I know how holy of men they were. And I myself personally discerned the Franciscans when I was in seminary. I thought about being a Franciscan and I have such respect for them. And we continue to pray for them. We'll pray for them at this mass as they go off to their new assignments. My second goal is the most important, to help get you all to heaven. And I hope and I pray that I do that. And I ask you to pray for me to help you do that too. And then my third goal is for you to help me get to heaven because I'm not perfect and I need your help. And we're all in this together. Okay. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
sin, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion, Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Sure. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells within you, whoever does not have the Spirit does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also. Through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors of the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. 
So I forgot to mention a few things in my intro. Um, my age, probably everybody's probably thinking I'm 18, um, but I am 29 and a half. I feel like, I feel like, you know, a four-year-old say, how old are you? I'm this many. No, <laughs> no, no. But I like to start with something funny. There was a taxi driver driving Monsignor McGillicuddy in New York City. He's driving around. He's, Monsignor says, taxi driver, step on it. I got to get to St. Mary's Cathedral. And so he steps on it. They're driving. And then all of a sudden, the second coming of Christ happens. And then whoop, all the just souls are taken up into heaven. And then all the bad ones are left. And so Monsignor McGillicuddy and the taxi driver are at the gates of heaven. And St. Peter greets both of them and says to the taxi driver, Mr. Taxi Driver, Welcome to heaven. Here's your silk robe, your golden crown, and your ivory staff. And he says, thank you, St. Peter. And he walks in. And then St. Peter looks at Monsignor and says, Monsignor, welcome to heaven. Here's your cotton robe, your wooden staff, and your plastic crown. And Monsignor's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm a priest. What gives? Why don't I get a gold crown and a silk robe? And St. Peter says, Monsignor, you know, it's all about praying. Which one of you guys made people pray more in your life? You see, when you preached, Monsignor, people slept. But when the taxi driver drove, people prayed. <laughs> so today, I'm going to focus on the second reading. The second reading oftentimes can go over our heads because it happens so quick. It's usually a really short reading. But St. Paul tells us, your bodies are dead because of sin, some heavy stuff, right? The Spirit will give life to your immortal bodies also, and he also says, we will pass away at some point. So really heavy stuff, but he says it in a way that's not so heavy, to give people hope. So the point of the second reading is, eat your spiritual food, eat your soul food. What's your soul food? What is soul food in general? Usually it's like southern food, right? It's like grits and greens and barbecue and fried catfish and stuff. When I was at Louisiana State University, I spent two years in college in Louisiana. and There was a, a soul food booth in the student union building, and you could get a meat and, and threes. So you can get barbecue, you know, mashed potatoes, grits, and blah, 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 all these things. Or collard greens, whatever. But the soul food that St. Paul is talking about is not that, like the greasy southern food. He's talking about prayer and faith. Do we eat our soul food every day? Do we pray every day? Do we tell Jesus, I have faith in you every day? If it's not an active thing, we should make it a habit, a good habit. Okay, so let's paint the picture of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, okay? So St. Paul's writing to a community that's divided. And a lot of times we think, man, the church back then was divided. I thought it was bad now, you know, with all these different things going on in the world, right? But St. Paul, he's writing to two types of Christians in Rome. There's the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians. And three years earlier, prior to this letter, they were all together, but then the Roman government kind of expelled the Jewish Christians, and then five years, excuse me, five years later, they were allowed to come back. So after they came back, there was a bigger division between the two Christians, the Jews, the Jewish Christians, and the Gentile Christians. And so St. Paul's trying to mend that gap. He's trying to bridge the gap. And unification is so hard sometimes whenever it comes to different ideals and different thoughts, because the Jewish Christians, they thought you had to live a certain way. The Gentile Christians said, no, that's really not important because that's an old Jewish custom. That's not our custom now. But St. Paul says to this divided church of Rome, he explains, he promises, and he warns. He explains, he promises, and he warns. So he explains to the Roman church. He says, your bodies are dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Essentially, don't worry about your body that will perish eventually, but worry about your soul, which is going to last forever and ever. Right? 
the body, as we know, let's go back into the Old Testament Genesis. Adam and Eve, they, they, they did the first sin, right? And they fell into chaos. The world fell into chaos. And that's why we suffer pain of body. We stub our toe. It hurts. Thanks, Adam and Eve. You know, childbirth, pain in childbirth. That's one of the things that's legitimately written in Scripture. All these other things that are painful and all other painful experiences in life come from the decision of Adam and Eve. Chaos entered into the world. But the spirit is alive because of the crucifixion. The Paschal mystery where Jesus said, I will take the hit. I will go down and redeem humanity. And he did. St. Paul promises, so that was him explaining, right? His explanation. Then he promises, he says, the same spirit, though, will give life to your mortal bodies also, just as he did with Jesus. Okay, so he explains first in saying the body's not as important as the spirit, okay? Focus on your soul, not what your body comforts, not getting the best recliner or getting the biggest TV set. Focus on what your soul needs, not what your body needs. Then he says, however, if you do live by the spirit, your bodies will even be redeemed. At the second coming of Jesus, when all the righteous will rise from the graves and their bodies will meet their souls in heaven. Think about it like this. We are experiencing the Paschal mystery as we speak. How? Well, let's think about it. Jesus suffered and he resurrected. Let's think about us. Is life easy all the time? No. So sometimes we suffer in life, and we are going through an equivalent of sorts of the crucifixion, of the passion. But we will resurrect just like Jesus did and saw his day of glory. So will we at the end of time, so long as we live a good Christian life. Our life in this life can be symbolized by Jesus' three days in the tomb, the dormant period. But then, we will resurrect just like Christ did. The spirit matters, the body matters less. Now, our bodies do matter because they will meet our souls in heaven at the second coming, God willing. The warning that St. Paul gives, he ends with this warning. You will pass away, you will perish. And so that was a common theme of thinking back in the day. To remember, memento mori. Memento mori means remember that you're not going to live forever. And with that perspective in mind, we take every day as something golden. We don't take for granted any day in our life. So, but he's telling and warning them, saying, we will perish. So don't mess up. Keep living by the Spirit. You can still fall due to sin. And be careful. Okay. Eat your soul food, is what St. Paul is saying. Eat your soul food. Live by the Spirit. What is our soul food? It's our prayer. But the question is, what is prayer? How do you define prayer? It's a conversation with God. And just like any conversation with another person, we talk and we listen. We talk and we listen. Do we do all the talking in prayer? Do we listen as well? Oftentimes, when you ask Jesus a question in prayer, immediately, the first positive thought that pops up in your mind is oftentimes his voice. We talk and we listen. We can pray 24 hours a day, even if we're not talking. We're driving in the car. We can just listen. Listen for God's voice. We're folding the laundry. We can just listen for God's voice. How do we pray? It's best to seek silence. Silence is the best way to pray intimately with our Lord. Now, I know life is busy. We got noises all over the place, especially cell phones and TVs and all this. But my one friend told me, if you, don't, if you can't find time, make time. Can you sacrifice an extra five minutes or ten minutes in the morning while you're sipping your coffee? It's okay. You can sip your coffee while you pray. Find a quiet place, listen, and speak with Jesus. And when do we pray? 
whatever time works for you. I cannot pray in the afternoon because I'm a sleepyhead, especially after a big starchy lunch. You crash and you have a carb crash. So I pray best in the morning. So find a time to pray that works for you. Get it into your routine. Get it into your schedule and make life easy for yourself. All of these things St. Paul tells us so that we can get to heaven. Let's get to heaven. You and me. Help me get to heaven while I help you get to heaven. And let's eat our soul food. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess the faith that we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, he is adored and glorified, spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus Christ calls us his little ones, let us confidently present our heartfelt intentions to the Father as his trusting children. For all Catholics around the world, that we always place at the forefront of our minds the little ones, of this world who suffer more than us, offering them spiritual and economic support, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the wonderful parish family of St. Joseph's in East York, that our members continue to live out intentional discipleship by following both Jesus carefully and leading non-practicing Catholics and new people to weekend masses. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of our national community, that the voice of God may whisper in the depths of their hearts Christian values that respect life in all forms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our individual growth in the virtue of humility as Jesus' little ones, that sacrificing our own desires, we may accept any plan that God has for us each day. Let us pray <clears throat> to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, especially Jane Kirshner and William Stanley, father of Kathy New, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, And for Father Jim Mangus, for whom we offer this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, who brings salvation to all and desire that no one should suffer, hear the prayers of your people 
and grant that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory song can be found in Gather, number 584, Come to the Water, number 584. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks and truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings 
and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and time again, you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and, the, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion song can be found in Spirit and Song, number 248, here at this table, number 248.
we continue in spirit and song, number 59, The Lord is my shepherd, number 59.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May I please invite the people who will be taking communion to the homebound and sick to come forward? As you go and visit the homebound and sick, may God give you every grace to do so in a wonderful way. May the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May he preserve you whole and entire, spirit, soul, and body, irreproachable the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And to continue the announcements from Father Saad at the 7 a.m. Mass and the 5 p.m. Mass yesterday, next weekend, this is a reminder that we will have visiting, a visiting priest come in named Father Christopher. He is a missionary priest. It's the Missionary Co-op Weekend, and he will be preaching on behalf of the Columban Fathers. Um, as, as many missionary priests, they are in dire need, so please prayerfully consider helping and aiding them in any way that you can. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us. The Sending Forth Song can be found in Spirit and Song, number 268, at the name, number 268.